Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be with you again today. Welcome to Worship and the Word with us here at Church of the True Vine. I pray that God blesses you today as we spend this time together in the presence of Jesus. I'm going to begin this morning by reading Psalm 8, which says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honour. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. What an amazing question. What is man that you are mindful of him? Aren't you glad today that God is mindful of you? You know, he knows how many hairs there are on your head. Not even a sparrow falls to the ground without God knowing about it. And how much more are you worth than many sparrows? God is mindful of you today. He is watching over you today. We're going to be praying together today. Uh, as you know, every week we pray for Christians around the world who are persecuted for their faith. And today we're praying for Christians in the nation of Mozambique. And I'm just going to read to you what Open Doors have said in the World Watch List booklet. If you don't have a copy, please get in touch with Open Doors and they will send you a free copy. It's a great resource for praying for the persecuted church. But this is what they say about Mozambique. Mozambique has entered the World Watch List top 50 for the first time. Attacks from Islamic extremists and the presence of drug cartels in some areas have all contributed to increasing persecution. Christians face extreme violence in northern Mozambique, where Islamic extremists have looted and destroyed many Christian places of worship, schools and businesses owned by believers. In Muslim majority areas, converts to Christianity face extreme pressure to renounce their faith. Christians in Mozambique need our support, they need our prayers, so please join with us today as we pray for our brothers and sisters in Mozambique. But let's turn our attention now to praising God. He is worthy to be praised. What a wonderful, wonderful heavenly Father we have who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So we're going to begin by singing that great old Keith Green classic, There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. God bless you today as we worship him together. Jesus, my redeemer. 
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in the name of Jesus, knowing we can ask anything. In the name of Jesus, we can ask anything according to your will, and it will be done. Father, we pray today for our brothers and sisters in Christ in Mozambique, who face persecution, increasing persecution, from Muslim extremists and from drug cartels. Lord, we pray that you would protect each and every one of your children in Mozambique. We pray that you would keep them safe from those who would seek to harm them, from those who would seek to do damage to property, those who would seek to take away from our brothers and sisters. But Lord, even in that, we pray that our brothers and sisters in Mozambique will have their eyes firmly fixed on what is eternal, that they will recognise there is a greater glory awaiting them, that, Lord, they would know your presence with them at all times and in all things. And we pray, Lord, that when hardship does come, that they would be able to forgive those who persecute them, those who seek to do them harm. We pray, Lord, that they would live in the same forgiveness that you expressed, Lord Jesus, when you said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. And we pray that those persecutors will come to know Jesus, that you would soften their hearts, that they would turn away from violence, they would turn away from hatred, and that they would come to know you, the one who loves them so much that you willingly laid down your life for them. I pray that you would soften their hearts, that you would open their eyes, that they would see Jesus, that they would bow the knee to Jesus and their lives would be turned from hatred and violence to ones of blessing and giving and love, that they would go on to become Christians, disciples of Jesus Christ, that their names would be written in the Lamb's Book of Life and they would be saved. And I pray that they will go on to become men and women of God, bringing the gospel wherever they go. Lord, we pray that you would supply every need of those who are persecuted in Mozambique. You would supply them with food. You would supply them with good health. You would supply them with everything that they need. And we pray according to Psalm 91 that you would command your angels concerning each and every one to guard them in all their ways. Lord, we pray that you would bless our brothers and sisters in Mozambique, now and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Today's reading is from Book of Luke, Chapter 12, verses 13 to 21. Then someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, What should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. In terms of the parables that Jesus tells, this 
particular parable, the parable of the rich fool as we know it, is, is one of the more direct that Jesus teaches. You know, many of the parables, uh, the disciples would have to come to him and say, teacher, explain to us the meaning of this parable. They had to do that with the parable of the sower. They had to do that with the parable of the wheat and the tares. They had to come to Jesus and say, what does this mean? And Jesus, in his grace and in his patience, would explain to them what the meaning of the parable was. But this parable, the parable of the rich fool, is very, very direct. But even so, many people have taken this to mean something that is not meant by this parable. Many people have taken this parable to mean that God is against people having money, that God is somehow against people doing well for themselves, that God is against people, uh, you know, providing an inheritance for their children, all those sort of different things. They think, well, obviously, Jesus taught against money here. No, Jesus is not teaching against money. Jesus actually has no problem with people having money. Joseph of Arimathea was a follower of Jesus Christ and the Bible tells us that he was a very wealthy man. Solomon, the great King Solomon, was blessed by God to a massive extent. Solomon actually, if you put it into modern day figures, would be the richest man who ever lived. God is not against people having money, but what God is against and as becomes clear in this parable, is God is against people thinking only of this world and not the world to come. You'll notice that God says to this man, this man in the parable says, well, I've, I've done really well. I'll just bigger, build bigger barns and then I can live the rest of my life just living the life of Riley. I can eat, I can drink, I can be merry. And he doesn't say, as the proverb actually says, eat, drink and be merry for tomorrow you die. He just says, take your ease, eat, drink and be merry for many years. That's all he's thinking of, the now. But God says to him, fool. Now that is not just saying, oh, you Wally, you twit, you've got this all wrong. No, God is saying something specific when he says fool. And to understand what God is saying, you need to go to Psalm 14 and verse 1, which says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. The fool says in his heart. There is no God. So when God speaks to this rich man in the parable and he says, you fool, what he is addressing is the fact that this man does not think about God. He says in his heart, there is no God. So what is the point of anything else except what I have now? What is the point of how much I can live life now? What is the point of anything else except how good I can make my life in the present? The fool says in his heart, there is no God. There is no forward thinking. There is no reference to what might come after we leave this earth after these bodies die and we are either cremated or placed into the ground. What happens then? The Bible says that God has placed eternity in the hearts of men. And it is foolish to live this life with only regard for what happens in this life. We have to think of what comes after. We have to think of what is going to be there for eternity instead of just thinking of the temporary, of the now, of what we live in today. We have to think beyond that. Many parents, as their children grow up and their children begin to start working, starting to earn money themselves, a wise parent will say to their children, Start a pension. Start saving because there will come a time in your life when you're too old to work or there will come a time in your life when you're not able to work or there will come a time in life when you need more money than you have coming in now. You need to be saving. You need to be preparing. A wise parent will advise their child to save, to make plans. But a foolish child will say, what? 
No, I've got money of my own now. I can just do what I want. Why should I wait 40, 50 years? That's ages away. I don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to go and I'm just going to enjoy my life. I'm going to club. I'm going to drink. I'm going to, to, to spend my money on whatever I want. I'm not going to worry about saving. That's years down the line. And the problem comes when years down the line they have spent all their money. And when their income stream dries up, they're too old to work or they become too ill to work or whatever it is. Suddenly they find they have nothing to fall back on. Why? Because they have only thought of the now when they were younger and have not prepared for what is future. This is why God says to this man in the parable, you fool. Because this fool has said in his heart, there is no God. It's all just about now. But the truth is, Hebrews 9 and verse 27 says this. As it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Another translation puts it as, it is given unto man once to die and after that to face judgment. In other words, after this world, after this life in this body, there is something else to come. There is an eternity that we enter into and it begins by facing God in judgment, where we will be judged according to what we have done, according to who we have been, in a, according to how we have lived our life. And the question I have to ask you today is, have you prepared for that day? There is a judgment to come and then where you spend eternity, the whole of eternity will depend on the result of that judgment for you and for me. Your whole eternity hangs upon that judgment. Are you prepared for the day of judgment? The sad truth is, that the vast majority of people have given this no thought whatsoever and they have not prepared. They just think, well, if God's all loving, then he'll just let me in anyway. I can be with him forever anyway. I can be in heaven forever anyway. That's a lie of the devil. I'm sorry to have to put it so strongly, but that is a lie of the devil. You see, the problem is that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Romans 6, 23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. That is not just dying in this physical body. That is also spiritual death that will separate you from God forever. And you will be separated from God in a place called hell. That is not a place that God created for mankind. God created hell for the devil and his rebellious angels and for the demons. God created hell for them where they will be punished forever in fire, where their worm does not die, where their fire never goes out. But because mankind has chosen to follow the devil and all his ways, they might think that they haven't. But the Bible says all have sinned. If you have sinned, you are following the devil. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that means if you have not thought about what is coming next, if you have not thought about the day of judgment and prepared accordingly, then there is only one way that you can go. And that is the way of the devil, to the way of everlasting destruction and torment. God does not want that for you. God wants you to be able to stand before him on the day of judgment and for you, the book to be opened and to find your name in the Lamb's book of life. You have to invest in eternity. You have to invest in eternity. In Matthew Chapter 19, Jesus says this in the Sermon on the Mount. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. 
Are you preparing for eternity? Are you prepared for the day of judgment? Listen, God has made a way for you to be able to stand before him on the day of judgment and for your name to be found in the Lamb's book of life. It's very simple. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his name is Jesus, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Whoever believes in him, that is how you prepare for that day of judgment. That is how you pr prepare for what comes after this life. If all you're thinking about is this life, you're giving no thought to eternity, then you are on a one-way road. But God, in his mercy, in his love, in his grace, has reached down and said, if you will believe in me, then you can be with me. You can be taken off that road. If you will repent and believe in Jesus, then you will be saved. Your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life. To repent does not mean to grovel, to wear a hair shirt, to make yourself miserable, to be wretched and appalling and to, and to, to be groveling around in the dust. To repent simply means to change your mind, to change your direction, to turn from following the road of sin and turn to following Jesus in the path of righteousness and holiness and life. That is how you prepare for eternity. That is how you store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. It begins by saying, this world is not all there is. There is a world to come. There is a life to come. I need to be right with God. I need to be reconciled with God so that my name will be found written in the Lamb's book of life. You can only do that through Jesus Christ. The Bible says there is only one name given by God to men under heaven by which when men must be saved. That is the name of Jesus. You cannot be saved by any other God. You cannot be saved by any ideology. You cannot be saved by any political system. You cannot even be saved by your own good works. You can only be saved through Jesus Christ. Are you ready? For eternity or are you a fool who is saying in your heart there is no God one day every fool will stand before God and by then it will be too late don't make it too late for you turn from foolishness and follow wisdom wisdom says follow Jesus prepare for eternity if you will follow Jesus then you begin to store up for yourself treasures in heaven. How do you do that? Not by good works, not by being good, not by helping people out. All of those things are good. All of those things are worthy, but they in themselves will not make you good enough for heaven because you are a sinner. But when you are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and as your Saviour, you are saved for good works. That means that the very gracious, merciful, loving nature of God begins to flow through you. And so it's not doing good works to try and make things good for yourself. It's doing good works because Jesus has made it good for you. And so you want to bless others. You want to help others. You want to be charitable. You want to give. You want to support those who are needy. You want to pray for those who are persecuted. You want to do those things. You want to give water to the thirsty. You want to give food to the hungry because you have freely received and so freely you want to give. Store up for yourself treasure in heaven. It begins by saying there is more than simply this world. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. There is a God and he knows you and he loves you. And he sent his son to die for you. Listen, God knows you so well that he has made it possible for you to watch this video. You're not watching this by mistake. God 
has brought this across your path so that you can hear this truth. Why? Because God wants you to be with him forever. God wants you to enter into everlasting life. So stop just looking at the things of this world. Stop just looking at that. God's not against you enjoying that. But look beyond. Look beyond. Look beyond. Look to eternity and store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. The things on this earth will pass away. But heaven is forever. It's a place where there is no sorrow. Where there is no sighing. Where God himself wipes away every tear from our eyes. It's a place of glory. It's a place of peace. It's a place of joy. It's a place where there is no sickness. It's a place where there is no sighing. It is a glorious, glorious place. That's where God wants you to be. So I urge you again. What will it be? Treasure in heaven. Or simply treasure that will pass away. I urge you today to store up for yourself treasure in heaven. And that can begin right now. That can begin right now. Jesus died on the cross for you so that you can enter into heaven. Jesus died on the cross not because it makes good religious pictures. Jesus died on the cross to save you from sin. Jesus died on the cross bearing our death, bearing our punishment for sin so that we can receive forgiveness of sins and receive the gift of everlasting life. And the Bible says this is how simple it is. If you can believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you will be saved. Do you believe God raised Jesus from the dead? You're halfway there. But if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that doesn't just mean saying Jesus is Lord. It means if you believe that Jesus is Lord and you are willing to tell anyone who cares to hear it that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord of your life, then you will be saved. If you want that, then today, simply pray this prayer with me. And if you mean this, if you will do business with God, then God will do business with you right now. You simply have to pray. And if you mean this, then God will save you today. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner. I know that I have only thought of this world. But Lord God, There is an eternity to come and I want to spend eternity with you. I confess that I am a sinner, but I thank you, Jesus, the son of God, that you came and you died on the cross for me, that you bore my sin, you bore my shame and you have risen from the dead. And anyone who believes in you and places their trust in you will receive the everlasting life that only you can give. Forgiveness of sins. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me today, to wash me clean of all my sin. I choose to turn away from my old way of life and I choose to follow you as best I can for the rest of my life. And I ask you to fill me with your spirit to help me along the way and to enable me to live the life you always wanted me to have. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I surrender everything to you. Thank you for saving even me today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer today and you have really meant it, then God will make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And on the day of judgment, there will be no terror for you. Only well done, good and faithful servant. Enter in to your reward. And if you've prayed that today, 
then please just get in touch. Just let us know. We'd love to hear from you and we will pray with you. We will support you in whatever way we can as you begin this new and exciting life as a child of God and a believer in Jesus Christ. If you can get hold of a Bible, get hold of one. If you can't physically get hold of one, you, if you have an Android phone or an iPhone, then you can get an app where, where you can listen to the Bible or you can read the Bible every day. And you can learn more about who God is, who Jesus is, what he has done for you and what life is like for followers of Jesus Christ. If you're anywhere near us in Clevedon, then please come and pay us a visit. We meet at the community centre on Prince's Road every Sunday morning at 10.30am. It would be great to see you and we can pray with you, we can help you. And if you're not anywhere near us, then please just get in touch with a church near you that you know believes the Bible, teaches what the Bible says, and they will give you a warm welcome and they will love you and they will help you. I can guarantee it. So we're back again on here the same time next week, 10 o'clock on YouTube, or don't forget you can catch up on demand later on if you need to. Until then, may God bless you. Bye-bye.